Welcome to the next photography class. This lesson is on exposure bracketing and an introduction to HDR. Meter bracketing in the camera. Exposure bracketing is also referred to as meter bracketing. The camera meters and determines the exposure setting. So you can see how exposure bracketing and meter bracketing um, can be used interchangeably. They're all the same thing. Um, it's also referred to as auto bracketing sometimes. Meter bracketing is a setting in the camera that takes a series of photos from underexposed to overexposed with one click of the shutter button. So in other words, you will compose your shot in the frame, push down the shutter button, and it will take three or sometimes five images in succession, one underexposed, one normal exposed, and one overexposed, or any other variety in there. Um, I found out, as you will see when we review the upcoming video, that it was so dark outside when I was doing my uh, video uh, that it actually detected it couldn't take the third exposure, and it only took two. choose your best exposure later from your, it's supposed to say computer, <laughs> not camera. But um, when you get back to your computer, then you can choose which is the best exposure rather than spending so much time, especially if you're out vacationing and you've come to a great view and you don't want to stand there and work really hard trying to determine the camera settings then um, you can easily just quickly take three exposures if you've got this setting on your camera and then choose the best one when you get back. Or you can use the series of photos to edit HDR and we're going to learn what that is here in this lesson. So let's watch the video. Hey all, we're here in my garden again with my DSLR and we are going to hit the menu button and in the menu button you can see that it says auto exposure e, AEB for auto exposure bracketing and this is a setting that you have to do from the menu to get it started and I tried to find this on my point and shoot camera and could not find it I know a lot of point and shoot cameras do have the auto exposure bracketing so do get out your manual and um, look for it on your camera you have to know your camera the we talked about exposures and underexposing and overexposing and using the exposure compensation. This does the same thing. I'm going to select it. And then if you see when I turn it once, the two dotted lines go out from the zero. And if I do it again, they go out one more step. Here is one step underexposed and one step overexposed. And I can continue going out and there is two stops underexposed and two stops overexposed. That's going to be kind of a difficult setting, maybe not applicable to most um, situations. You're going to be around one stop above and below, most applicable for most situations. Um, but of course play. And so I'm going to select this and you can see it's got the three dots showing it's going to take three photos one under, one normal, and one overexposed. Now I'm going to tip my camera up and hopefully you're going to be able to see right in here. If I hit this button for drive is my camera not on? 
here we go, hit the button for drive, and if you look right here, I've already got it set for it, but I'm going to scroll the button, and um, this is one shot, and this takes three shots successively, and here's also your settings for um, a, a timer mode. Uh, whoops, I lost it here. Let's go back in. So I'm going to change that so it takes three successive shots in a row. And I want to put on my live view. And um, another thing to check to make sure that this is set is a little icon right here that shows three photos. But you can also tell it is set because it's got the three markers where the photos are going to be taken. So I'm going to compose my shot. Let's see, how many, how many turtles do I want in this photo? Let's do one turtle. And I've got a pretty good histogram going on here, but it's still going to take one over and one under. And I'm going to push down the button and it quickly took three photos. Hit my playback and it's going to show me here's the one underexposed. You can see the histogram to the left. One that's normal exposure and one, whoops, it only took two. Must not be the right lighting for this. I see only two one of two. Hmm, let's go back in and try this again. Maybe it's getting too dark outside. I'm not sure. I haven't played with this too much. I'm going to go down and do um, those two and see what happens. Okay, that's selected. Now I'm going to do, whoops, get out of the menu. Select the live viewing and here we are. We're going to line it up and see what happens. I think it took three that time. Let's hit our playback and see. Oh, we have there one, that's one third normal and one minus. Oh, that's, no. What have we got going on here? This is photo number one and two. Okay, here we go. I am very confused. There's one third under and there's one third over and it must have taken the first one is normal. Uh, we have five photos now. Um, the first two during my first example, if you see number three, it's normal. Number four, it's underexposed by a third of a stop. And number five is overexposed by a third of a stop. Now I can take these photos and process them as HDR photography because they're going to have the most uh, information collectively and when you um, process them all together um, you can draw out all that information and we're going to look at that in Photoshop. Okay, so next um Whoops. I've got a few tips for you to remind you um, first that if you use a tripod and possibly a remote to avoid any camera shaking, that might keep the images from lining up perfectly. And um, might, that's not written well, but it might keep, not keep them from, but might keep them from not lining up perfectly. You want um, the images to uh, be exact replicas of each other and if you are holding the camera um, you might get one close enough and as you're going to see the software that we use does try to line them back up um, especially if they take the pictures really fast but um, for your best bet use a tripod and if you have a remote I don't have one you could use that because the minute you click press down that shutter and as you back your hand away it does one little shake and it could already be taking a photo um, before it stops moving 
Second, take a photo of your hand or other object in between exposure bracketed shots to easily group them in your computer folders. This is an awesome tip because let me tell you, when I get back um, to, and, and I wish I'd remembered to do this more often, but when I get back to my computer and I download all of my images and I have all of these photos in here that look just alike, these are the ones we were taking during the um, uh, video that I was just taking. Um, and they all look alike and you can't tell where the series starts and where the series ends. If you would have an image right here with your hand and another one right here with your hand, you would know that these three were taken together and they go together. Um, I, or, you know, if you don't want to photograph your hand, photograph something from your purse or, you know, wallet, just anything obscure. Of course, I went ahead and went into my details mode, as I've shown you before, uh, and I noted the steps, and then I went ahead and renamed them with the steps at the end. Of course, if you're using as... Um, we shared in, in one of the first videos for this class, if you're using one of the um, programs that read this data, you might not uh, need to be renaming. Um, but still, it's easy for me. It's much easier for me to see them in a list and see them with, named than to look at the data one by one even in um, a software program. So right here I can see this is 0, minus 0.3, and plus 0.3, and those three go together. Uh, you know, and you could even uh, rename them or put them in folders together and then delete your photo with your hand in it. Um, so those are some tips to remember. Now we're going to talk about high dynamic range. And when I first learned about this, it was so confusing to me, but it's actually very easy. High HDR is an acronym for high dynamic range. As we previously learned, you know, as, as a teacher, I have tried to teach you some things in previous lessons in this course to build up to other lessons and uh, that's why I purposefully have taught some of the things previously to this but uh, a high a high dynamic range is one that reaches from the left to the right on the histogram and so if you've only got a little little area of black on that histogram and you have some areas that are missing if you uh, get a series of three photos you're going to have three different ranges and also as we previously learned a good exposure is one with the most information within the pixels this is important knowledge in understanding high dynamic range having multiple photos of the same scene with different exposures equals more information so the more information you have the more you can do with it post process HDR photography is a term used when a series of images have been combined in software programs. So you take the information off of three different photos, exposed three different ways, you combine them to all that information together to make one really cool awesome photo. So Photoshop Elements doesn't do um, HDR, uh, but the full version of Photoshop does, and we will be looking at that here in just a little bit. But there are, and and also in at the end of the program, we'll we'll talk about ways you can do a little bit of simulated HDR in Photoshop. But there are standalone programs out there uh, 
that you can get that will process the three images normally three sometimes there's more or sometimes just two but there are programs that you can download or purchase or download for free um, to process these images and I've gone around the internet and found a bunch of them and downloaded them all and played with them and I'm going to go through them with you and kind of show you how they work. Uh, the first one was uh, Picture Not 3 and it was totally free and I have in parentheses boo because I just didn't think it did very good job at all. This is not one that I would recommend. I thought I would. Um, it saved it as a .tiff file. There was no JPEG and this .tiff file was actually in a TIFF format that was only readable in the full version of Photoshop it, uh, because it, it was an HDR format and so it was absolutely no good for Photoshop Elements users. Now there was one called Luminous HDR and it was free. Um, it's a open source and I put boo by it also. <laughs> In other words I didn't recommend it. I uninstalled it from my computer and I really it was days ago I don't remember why. Um, now there's another one called and these are in no particular order um, full dynamic range tools and it's free and I put star by it because this is one that I think would be worth you downloading and playing and so I have some of the free some the ones we're gonna look at here we're gonna look at six of them and here's the results of those six over here these are my three back bracketed images um, I got plus 0.7, 0, and minus 0.7. And so here is the FDR Tools one, and we're going to open it up. And we're going to hope that my computer does not crash, opening and closing all these programs. And I've got to remember how I um, did these. Um, you can see I have uh, the three images in there already. I, Remembered you can click on uh, many because I want to do um, three images, not just one. Some of these will try to process just one image. And I'm going to select my three images and open them into the program, which I think they already were. And um, I have to remember how I did these. Some of these programs I had to go and uh, look at and I guess I hit prepare I'm waiting to see what it does so it prepared those three images it looks like I have two projects now going um, and I want to edit the project maybe it says loading exposure bracketing down here for each of them aligning images so it is aligning them these three images are not perfectly aligned and I'm trying to see where else it where it went close out that project and then I think um, render confirm I should have recorded this video um, days ago sooner after I played with each of these I only played with each of these once and um, It, you can see down here it's doing a bunch of things saving image one of two
saving images to of two. I'm not sure where the preview is of this. <laughs> I don't remember. All of these came with some sort of help um, online. Some of them I were a little bit more intuitive than others. Um, some of them, let's see. Well, it says no images loaded. I clicked on Navigator. Okay, I'm holding down my Control and Shift key, and I'm going to um, try again. Let's see what happens. Well, this program actually worked really well, but I'm not able to tell you how I did it, and I'm not going to spend too long on it if it doesn't give me a preview here soon. Well, I don't remember how it worked. but I did finish this one. I'm going to close that out and this is the FDR tools and you can see here what my image looked like after I processed it in here and you can see it's actually a pretty good image but I'm going to suggest you go out and get those help files. Um, I did notice, yeah, you can see it did really well. Uh, with it. So um, just because I'm not able to intuitively use the program without going back to the help files um, doesn't mean you shouldn't download it and try it. But you can see how um, really good I got this photo straight out of this program. And I want you to take note of this edge over here. This is where I've noticed align problems, whether or not they've been aligned well or not and uh, not too bad here. I mean if you take the zero exposure uh, photo and uh, look at it and then compare it to the last one you're gonna see it did a pretty good job at bringing out all of those shades and colors. So then the next one in our slideshow is the HDR pad and it's also free. So let's go get that one, HDR pad. I will start it and it comes up rather large. I'm trying to see if um, I can fit this all into the screen somehow so that you can see it all. And let's see if I can intuitively do this one. Um, we're going to click open. I'm going to hold down my control key and select all three of those images and they do open up here and then um, you can see that I have one of three images opened up here and we can go through each one of them. That's the underexposed and the overexposed image and um, we're gonna click I think fuse which is going to try to align the images and let's see what it does. Hopefully my computer has enough RAM to run these things while it's running the uh, video recording. The video recording software um, really takes up a lot of RAM.
and I really wish I could um, see something in this program to see whether it's working or not. There we go. This is four of four, so we know we now have four images open, and this is it put together. Now, if you look over here, it aligned the images, but they're not aligned really well. You can see there's a little bit of blur. Uh, but it, this is much better than any of the three other exposures. You can click on this and open it up and change all sorts of things. So the align is really what's not good in this program, but other than that, it does have a lot of options. I think it has more than the last one, which you didn't get to see. Oh, I forgot about this program. Yeah, you have to change the things. <laughs> Let's saturate it, and you have to change them and then click uh, preview, and it processes it. Oh, not good. So I need to brighten it back up. Click preview. Oh, too bright. That's the one thing bad about this program. It wasn't quite automatic. Too much saturation. So you keep playing with it until um, you get something uh, that you like and then um, you can click OK um, you can this one's fit to window so this one's a little bit more intu intuitive I was able to pick it up a little bit faster but you can see it didn't align well it's not going to be a problem if you um, aren't like me and and not I was holding the camera and it wasn't on a tripod when I took this picture then you can go under file and save as and you can save it as a JPEG and then you can even take that JPEG and bring it into Photoshop elements and tweak it even further and so this one is the HDR pad and here is the image I did earlier of HDR pad I oversaturated it which was my problem but I was quickly playing with them so now the next one that we have is fusion and I put a star by it and it's also free and I have the icon for it here let's open this up and play with it it's kind of fun to play isn't it well it's not fun to install all these on the computer so you can kind of watch here and choose the one you want let's see what we got here add images so I'm gonna go back to my desktop and get those three images. I'm holding down my controller key again to select all three of them at the same time and they all three open up and here they are and this one's great because you got a little bit of a, a histogram here and if you click on each one you can see how the histogram moves underexposed, overexposed and uh, regular exposure but you can see the overexposure one is uh, not too bad on the histogram um, we want to click fit so we can fit all three of them in here especially since I have a smaller window and you can see here the three versions now um, I tried this one and couldn't quickly figure out what it does and I didn't want to spend a lot of time with it so then I tried this one and clicked OK and it opened up the images it's processing it down here and this program is called Fusion and it was free and you know even if you have the full version of Photoshop these other programs are fun to play with because uh, each one does something different and gives you a little bit different result and you never know what you're gonna get it's just plain old fun to play that's why we are digital scrapbookers at Hummies World and there's our image and you can see it did a pretty good job and it actually you know, they're lined up pretty well over here I want to know what this is that says last result result oh here was align images um, I guess before we clicked HDR we could have ran that 
but I, I was thinking it was in here somewhere but now you're going to have you can see here now that all three of them are together look at the high dynamic range it goes from one edge to the other and look at all of that in there how, what a much better photo it is combining the information you have a mode one and two I don't know what it is you would have to read um, the manual and you can change the settings here and unlike the last one where you had to click the preview to get the results this one is processing them immediately and so um, let's say oh and it has a little bit more options let's say um, it has contrast for the shade and the middle and the light so it has um, contrast for uh, all sections three sections of the histogram and so let's say if I want more contrast in the shadows that processed it pretty quick and uh, let's say I, I always like to bump up the saturation but anyway so you can play with the images and then file whoops oh down here it says process so when you get it where you want it you have to process it and it's going to put it all in one I remember making that goof when I first did it did this program and then I did it again but if you um, use these programs often you, you'll get used to where the settings are just like any other program isn't it fun waiting while we watch things process this would be a good time for a drink <laughs> a snack um, kiss your hubby and there it is there's the image and then well click OK file now I can do uh, save as and I have well that saves it as a fusion file um, file save result there we go save result gives me those three choices and I was able to save it I'm not gonna save it again we're gonna close out this program and this is the one I made when I first played with the program and I actually used the align tool and you can see this one actually is pretty good but I um, have some white stuff going on right here it doesn't look too natural so then the next program that we have going on is the A auto HDR it's free and what I liked about this one is that um, no need to install it now I didn't give it a star I gave it an okay so it must not have been quite as good of a program but if you want to download any of them just to play um, this is a great one because you don't have to actually install it on your computer and it's right here auto HDR and you open it up and um, open images And there's those three images and you can see that did it pretty fast and this one has this cool um, RGB going on down here um, and you have a line and merge and it's trying to align those images because they are just a little bit off and you, it actually has down here comparing dynamic range from exposures two of three auto aligning exposures two of three now as I said some of these programs you can take one image from it and you can do this in Photoshop and Photoshop elements too. Um, take those skills that you've already learned um, 
and take one image and duplicate it two times so you have three versions of the same exact image and then go ahead and use your levels tool and underexpose one and then overexpose the other and um, then uh, begin uh, editing them. Uh, some of these programs do that with this and where you can do it with just one image. Uh, but you have to remember one image is only going to have so much information. Three differently exposed images have uh, much more information in the pixels. So you can mimic it, but it isn't a true HDR. But hey, we're artists. <laughs> we don't care. So here's um, the before, and I do remember now having a little bit of difficulty with this program in that the preview kept whacking out on me. Uh, but you can, and you can see it's kind of whacking out on me here, but you can change the um, options here for detail, contrast, color. So if I want to up the saturation, I can do that by going from 5 to 6. And you can see it's doing a pretty good image. And um, then uh, when you are done, you can process it and then save it. I'm not going to do that because this video is getting to be long enough. And so this is the Auto HDR, and here is the final image I did in there. And you can see it's not too bad, but it didn't align real well. As this is probably why I just said OK. But you can see um did much better on this little white area up here. So next on our PowerPoint presentation, we are going to go to four purchase HDR programs. So that we those are the free ones that I found. There's probably even more out there. The first one is called Photo Matrix. And Photo Matrix is um, the most popular. I hear about it all the time when I hear people talking about what program they use. Um, if it's not Photoshop, um, they're using photo matrix and you can it's ninety nine dollars but you can download a trial version and it works just fine but it has um, their logo all over the images when you save them but you can go ahead and download it just to play with it um, and I'm going to continue with the trial and load bracketed photos this is the most popular one out there, but it is a little expensive. I mean, $99, that's what we um, paid for, most of us paid for our Photoshop elements. So it would be equal in cost. You can see here, align images. So we're going to do that. It's going to reduce noise, and it's working pretty quickly. I love when I can see the progress. That one program didn't give us progress that we were reviewing. And once again, we have this um, dull <laughs> point where we're watching something work and I have to come up with something fun and imaginative to say. I probably should have some jokes setting aside over here that I could read off to y'all. We could twiddle our fingers. Crack our fingers. We could pray. Um, what else could we do? <laughs> we love our computers, but we hate waiting. But this is pretty labor intensive. I mean, it is um, definitely merging and doing a lot of work on three different photos and putting them together. So here we go. We got the results, and this program is pretty cool. You can see here's the new histogram because this is the 
one uh, together it's showing an enhancer default uh, setting and so you can see the histogram and it's got the red and the green and the blue um, you have choices over here for tone mapping and I'm not going to go through all of this too much because there are lots of choices in here and um, you have various two methods that you can use you can change these settings in here you have strength color saturation luminosity detail contrast lighting adjustments and uh, show more options smooth highlights white point black point gamma temperature and even more oh that's show or hide um, over, over I'm not sure what that's doing over here uh, you have um, some various choices you can use a default one for the compressor you can use a fusion setting I thinking there's a scroll bar here I couldn't get to it here's an enhanced paint painterly setting you see this kind of setting a lot on um, people share this on the internet um, but it's painterly it's not realistic so HDR is often those images that are um, like this one not realistic but just kind of very artistic out there and I'm not so sure I'm into the artistic ones I like this one it look how realistic it looks and uh, they have black and white here's a compressor deep uh, fusion adjusted Ooh, now I like that one except for the noise I'm seeing but I love the detail that it's bringing out um, in here and fusion intensive fusion auto fusion just two images and you can have your own presets if you have them but then you can save the images uh, they have some of these have other settings like this one here has other settings that go along with it so anyway when you're done with that you can you know save it I guess this is zoom I'm not quite sure what this is doing oh I clicked down on it and it brought up this very cool so that is the ninety nine dollar program and here is the photo I did of it the first time I used it but you can see it has the watermark on it but it's lined up fairly well and it does look realistic and the other one which I'm actually considering purchasing that I tried is this one called Dynamic Photo HDR and it's $54 um, and I actually kind of liked it and it's right here so we're gonna test it and I hope you're enjoying going through all of these we're under a trial period for this also you're gonna see it starts out looking very much like the last program we got the three images we're gonna wait this is photo matrix okay I got the wrong one no wonder it looked the same okay here is this $54 program let's see if I can fit it all in here um, this might be a little difficult to see everything it it was fairly easy to learn and they had some good um, tutorials on their website um, we just watch a video for a few minutes and you know how to run this thing and um, so we're going to create a new one we're going to add the images and you're going to see how fast it made it um, here's the selected images that we have 
um, you have choices here to do uh, different things. We're going to do the HDR. I'm not going to go over all of the settings. Of course they have videos at their website. And here we go. It's now aligning the images. You can see how quickly that worked. And um, this is the window now where you can have some fun I think yeah well I played with it a few days ago this is where oh this is the window it's still aligning um, we can move it over here like let's say where I was having trouble with the aligning and it's actually only got two images in here and I don't know why but um, you can click on this one and then choose to move it. You can see I'm moving it and it needs to be moved this way a little bit I think. So it tried to do it automatically and then you can finish it and then click OK. Or you, I could have auto aligned I guess. There's an auto align up here you know like I said it was three days ago when I played with this for about five minutes <laughs> so um, I don't remember exactly where all the settings are I, I, I learned fast but not quite that fast and there we have it and see it does give us um, uh, lots of tips so now we can um, I want to fit this image to the window um, it came out just fine in uh, when I had it full version but I'm not recording it full version because that makes my file I don't see um, anyway I'm not gonna go in it to it too more but you hit the tone mapping HDR you can see here we got a few um, versions over here and settings we can change and I can't get this all in at one time but there's our image and we got plenty of tips and you can see how impressive this looks uh, compared to the other programs and here's your sliders for brightness and you can see like that one that was free um, that we had to click preview or it took a long time to process these you can see the changes immediately um, want more vivid color they're processing very quickly uh, there's some defaults up here uh, ultra contrast um, so and each one of these has different settings within it so you can choose them but if I move this over uh, you can see this side it also has gamma and we can move the slider here and change the gamma um, curves if I want to adjust the curves I just click the check mark and then I can try to make an S curve which is your most popular S curve of course <laughs> I'm doing a horrible job at it <laughs> but uh, <laughs> oh yuck <laughs> okay uh, maybe this is restore R for restore um, you can do the color equalizer and play with it and yeah I'm not doing so good with that and the hue shift oh oh ah whoa woo so um, 
you can add, do things here. They've got stuff uh, everywhere in here um, that you can uh, do. Um, they have, uh, this is cool, this is what I actually did with mine. This is a brush that comes up and when it comes up you use it just like the uh, dodge and burn tools in Photoshop and so you can't see it easily but over here I have high dynamic light and low dynamic light and so if I want to add some shadows somewhere I'll just draw on here Oh, nope, this is the one that's like the burn tool. So I can add some shadows in here and make the certain areas a little bit darker and make some areas lighter, and that's really cool. Um, this is where we change our brush, the size of our brush, the softness, the strength. So it's just kind of like using the dodge and burn tools and you get it the way you want it and it processes it so that's cool but it has other things in here match color you just have to go out there and um, uh, watch the videos on their website to learn how to work the program but here's the image I made using that program of course because it's a trial they put this right down there at the bottom and so those are those programs that I have there. Um, others for purchase. Here's one for $48.99. I got tired of playing with programs and the free, this is actually for free. Did not try this one, um, but the free version has a limitation of only one megapixel maybe somebody can play with it and let me know what they think the um, HDR FX Pro is a hundred and fifty nine dollars the HDR Expose is 149 and I'm gonna start opening up my Photoshop because we're gonna look at it and HDR Max is $79. I actually tried to install it, but Windows 7 would not install it. And I think there's one more. HDR Pro Photo, $129. And I'm going to put a list of these with clickable links in the forum with this video. Um, Photo Engine was $149. And now we're going to talk about simulated HDR photograph. If you do not have software to process the images, you can use your knowledge of Photoshop and Photoshop Elements to simulate an HDR photograph. I'm not going to go into that with this lesson. I think I want to just encourage you to think outside the box and do it yourself. You can use masks, blending modes, opacities, color tweaks, and filters to bring out information in the pixels. Your creativity is only limited by your imagination. So if you don't have any of these programs and all you have is Photoshop Elements, think about ways that you could just bring all three photos into those layers and use blending modes. I already showed you how to fix exposure with the Multiply blending mode and the um, other blending mode. I can't think of it offhand. Um, the blending modes will um, com help combine the pictures of, of more than one image as well as the opacity and the using masks and doing any other edit, um, some of those that you're going to learn later in this class. So um, I think Photoshop is about opened. Let's see, it takes a while for Photoshop to open on my computer. I'm going to close out this. PDF. And here it is. It's still opening. It does for whatever reason takes I think I have a lot of actions. 
<laughs> takes a while to open up my Photoshop, but I'm going to show you how um, in Photoshop CS4 you can also um, process images HDR. Now I do understand that CS5 has an even better um, way to process HDR photos and if you have CS5 or CS6 is coming out soon, this is 2011 that I'm recording this, um, there it comes. If you have CS5 or higher, you probably don't need any other standalone program. I understand that works perfectly fine. So here is my Photoshop and I am going to go to File, Automate and Merge to HDR. And if I already had the files opened up, they would be right here and I could click Add Open Files, which is the way I normally do it. But since I don't have them open, let's go get them just like we did before holding down that control key and they all come in here and I'm going to click OK and you can see it's going to I believe open up each of those photos for me nope it's putting them all three in one right there and it's doing it job. And here is um, the merged HDR images and you can see the three images over here and I have to scoot this over so you can see it and there is a set white point preview um, so when I move this you can see it's reprocessing slowly over here and um, there's not a whole lot of settings that you can use in this uh, Photoshop uh, for CS4 but after you merge them you can see it's real clean though uh, the edges over here. Um, you can click save and um, uh, save it in, into Photoshop and um, then open it back up uh, and edit it further in Photoshop. I want to show you, let's do um, there's, if you already have them open Let's do this. Because I remember there was a little trick. File, automate, isn't that where it was? It must still be opening up another one. trying to crash my computer for you. Going into not responding mode. There we go. File, automate, and merge to HDR. And I can add the files I already have just opened in here and attempt to automatically align and click OK. Now this is doing it this way again too. Looks the same as before and it brought this up but um, let's say uh, it didn't actually process it quite as well as before. Look at that big bright spot here. But let's say we click OK and we finish it off and now we have this image here. I know there was some
problems before and I had to click image and then exposure here we go afterwards and then um, you can change these but it was an H HDR exposure oh, see I'm working too hard here but it's actually um, fixing some of the exposure here I think before though it had um, something to do with um, an 8-bit that it would open that up automatically if your image was an 8-bit. Let's see. Image. Let's try. I played with this several uh, days ago. Let's change it to 8-bit. There we go. So sometimes if you move to 8-bit um, you're going to get this be able to get this pop-up box that says HDR conversion and um, you can change whoops that's really bad exposure you can change the um, gamma and here's the histogram and whatnot uh, here from here and use this to tweak it and then if you obviously I'm not making the best image here and then I guess if you want you can change it back to 32-bit um, after you get done but um, that is it in CS4 I'm sure if you search online you can find tutorials for CS5 but uh, this is your preview of HDR and your lesson is um, to um, use whatever you have if you want to do the exposure bracketing and then process them into HDR with one of the free programs um, if you uh, don't have exposure bracketing and you just have a point and shoot that will do three different exposures get three different exposures um, if you don't have a camera that does exposures um, you can take one image duplicate it twice and underexpose one and overexpose one and have the normal one and play with those um, if you uh, so no matter what kind of camera you have you can get some underexposed and overexposed images to either play in one of these free programs in uh, your Photoshop elements or your full version of Photoshop but your assignment is to share um, a great looking photo that has lots of good information in it. See you around the forum.